Hey, what's up everyone? Saints fan back again with another GTA 5 video and today since the HPY Night Shark came out I'm gonna be showing you guys a bunch of things you should know about it Either before you bought it or buy it or after you bought it and you want to know some things about it So hopefully you guys enjoy and hopefully you find this video helpful now the good news is that this can actually be modified at LSC or your MOC. So it's not like you need a, a mobile operation center to actually customize this vehicle. So you can take it to your office garage and customize it. The only thing you don't get if you bring it to an LSC is the livery option. So if you want to change the livery, unfortunately, that's the thing you're going to need to bring it to the MOC for. But just for regular stuff, the, the, LS, the normal LSC is perfectly fine so i think that's really cool also surprisingly this car does not come with any research projects so you don't need to spend any money other than the money you know you spent upgrading it you're not going to need to research anything so for those wondering that's really good news now this vehicle actually does come with a machine gun that the driver can operate but it's not very good it's one of those you know uh, front mounted mini mini guns or machine guns whatever and it really, it's kind of useless. It does like no damage. I doubt you'll ever really use it to kill anyone. It's more of like a nuisance. Like maybe you'll shoot at someone and they'll run away. But even then, it's it's really not good. The good news though is that you can switch to personal weapons. So it's not like by having the minigun on the front of this car, you can't use your regular weapons. So that's good. Now, when it comes to explosive resistance, it somewhat behaves like the Insurgent. It takes five sticky bombs to destroy at 100% armor unoccupied. But if someone is in it, it's going to take nine sticky bombs or nine RPG explosives. So that's kind of good. The good news, actually, though, with this one, it can withstand around 20 or so oppressor missiles. So that's that's definitely really good, especially if, you know, there's a oppressor griefer in your lobby then this thing pretty much won't get blown up by it. So that's definitely a good thing to know. In terms of performance and all that, it's really fast. I mean, I'm not going to do any speed tests because it's kind of irrelevant. And I'll get to that point and I'll get to why actually it's irrelevant in a second. But it's it's really fast in free roam. So if you want, if you like the Insurgent, but you wish it were faster, this is like the car you want to own because it currently gets around like 107, 108 top speed consistently on the streets, on highways and stuff. So if you're looking for a fast car, this is going to do it. Now, the armor, this is where it gets a little tricky. So the window armor plates do stop bullets from the front and the rear. So they're actually bulletproof. However, the sides are not. I don't know if that's a glitch. I don't know if that's going to get patched. But the glass on the sides is not bulletproof. And bulletproof just in that it takes like 18 bullets to sort of penetrate it. So if you're getting shot at from the front or the back, you're good for a little bit. However, if you're getting shot from the sides, none, none of that matters. You'll probably die in like two bullets if they hit you in the head. So just know that, you know, if someone's shooting at you, make sure you're going head on or you're backing up. Don't ever have them on your side. Again, don't know if that's a glitch or not, but it's something you should know. Now, it's pretty good at ramming. So in free roam, if you want to just plow through NPCs or something, it's, it's pretty good at that. It's kind of like the Krumo or the Insurgent. Normally when you're just running through people, you're not going to like lose traction. You're not going to lose handling on it. It's probably just going to go through. You might lose a little speed just because that's the way it works, but you're still going to get right through. And that's really good to know in terms of insurance. It's actually about $15,000 to pay on insurance. So not as expensive as some of the cars, but 15 K every now and then, you know, that's definitely something you're going to want to look out for. One good thing, this is probably the selling point of this vehicle. The radar icon is actually a normal car. So for tanks, you know, for helicopters, for jets, for other insurgents, for like the Runo 2000 and stuff, the oppressor, all of them have their own unique sort of little icons on the radar so people know what you're in. And that's definitely really annoying, you know, if you want to sneak attack someone in the insurgent, let's say, they're going to know you're in an insurgent, so they're going to know, okay, I'm probably going to avoid that guy because it's going to be super hard to kill him. But this one... It's, it's got a regular little dot, so no one knows that you're in a, a you know, bulletproof or armor-proof car. So that's definitely really good if you want to be more of a sneaky style of a character in, in online. It can tow the anti-air trailer because it does have the little tote in the back, but it can't tow your own just because Rockstar apparently made the anti-air trailer its own personal vehicle. So if you want to tow some anti-air trailer, you're gonna have to tow a friends. It can actually be used in contact missions and in heists, so that might be something you wanna use it for. Although, 
I would say either the Kuruma or the Duke of Death is still better just because NPCs have a lot harder time actually hitting you inside of those. I mean, the Night Shark's not bad, but just because the windows are kind of glitched, the NPC still can shoot you and kill you, you know, a little bit easier than the two cars I just mentioned. One of the super unfortunate parts about this vehicle is that it actually cannot be used for races. I don't know why, but it would actually be a really good addition to the off-road class, I believe. So I'm not entirely sure why it can't be used for races. And that's sort of why I was saying the performance and all that is somewhat irrelevant just because you're only going to be using this in free roam. So just know that before you buy it. I mean, if racing is something you do and you wanted a really fast off-road car for racing, this isn't going to be of use to you because you can't use it in races. So just know that going into it, but I don't really think that's that big of a deal because who races in the off-road category anyway? It does hold four people, so that's going to be another negative, I guess, compared to the Insurgent Custom. The Insurgent Custom pickup holds nine people, so if you have a lot more people than four, or if you have a lot of friends, then the Insurgent's going to be the way to go. But four people, that's relatively, that's normal, so, you know, assuming you have just a CEO group, then this car will be fine for that. And I guess the final thing is that, in my opinion, the customization is fairly good. You know, there's a lot of really cool options you can go with, so if you like customization, it's got way better customization than the Insurgent, so that's definitely another plus. But those are some things that you should know about the, the HVY Night Shark. Hopefully you guys learned some stuff. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you could drop it a like and subscribe for more awesome GTA content. But as always, that is it. So I'll see you guys in the next one.